in the studio. Welcome, everybody. Wow, I'm so happy to be back here and with a guest. Wow, Ellie Levin. How you doing, Mody? How are you? Tzadik. Oh, my God, so good to see you. I am coming. We, I think we, we missed a week or two because we've been traveling. We were in Sydney. We were in, in Sydney and Melbourne, Australia, and then Never we went to that neck of the woods. Yeah, it's insanity. It's, but there's a, a lot of traveling. Yeah, it's a crazy travel, and we didn't do it well. No. We didn't do the one that's the best way to do it. We went through Hong Kong and Shmong Kong, and it was just horrible. Right. We arrived there in Melbourne, Shmatis, right before Shabbos, and so I didn't go to shul. So I missed Dovi Farkas's shul. There's the two cantors out there, father and a son. But the next Shabbos, we were in, um, we were in Sydney, and Shimon Farkas was the chazan mm -hmm. in this beautiful shul, out of the gorgeous shul, and it's such Mashiach energy. The rabbi is a Chabad guy, Wolf, even though it's not a Chabad shul, okay. and and Shimon Farkas is this old school chazan. Mm -hmm. He's like in. I found that he was in his seventies. I was in shock. His yeah. voice. He treats it like an instrument. He'll be singing till his last day, wow. Kanai Nahara. Such a perfect, beautiful voice. How's and the, he wore the robe. Yeah, like the, the acoustics are amazing. Yeah. Um, he's he's in the robe with the little thing in the front, the little uh with the tie and the little white bib he's thing. Got full, got a full gown. Uh he didn't wear the hat though, no but, hat? but he had he had a choir. He had a choir of people from the synagogue. Like fifteen deep, wow. and they were they rehearsed and they knew the pieces to do with him, and it was um and I was in heaven, heaven. Of course, I'm sitting there and from the back, somebody. When did you get here? When did you? Why you? Where? How long are you staying? Did you? Don't forget to go to Victoria's Balls. It's a park next to the kosher area. When? <laughs> But otherwise, and it was. But are there a lot of like outsiders coming in there? It's like a common like place. I don't know. No, it's the it's it, as 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 much as it is gullus because it is the end of the earth. Uh -huh. It is also gula because all the Jews are together. Uh -huh. There's no orthodox and not orthodox. It's, it's the like, chabad. You always have a bit. For, it's I like that. always it's like so tight. Everybody's just Jews. It's not any labels, and. To hear him sing, and it was also Rosh Chodesh benching, so he did it with the, with Yantif Nusach, with the, the, the with the with the with the motif of the high holidays, and I was in I was in absolute heaven, mm -hmm. heaven, and um, to see an old school chazan like that in Sydney, Australia, wow. and it was amazing. It was a two week trip. It was just under two weeks, and we came back. Then we went wow. to Israel. We had shows in Israel, Echal Tabut, twenty six hundred seats. I saw that with the with the the new museum that you got honored. Yeah, I got honored in the new museum. I'm being honored tonight too it, with with the, the the friends of that of Anu Museum. I was honored. It was this yeah. beautiful museum on the Tel Aviv University campus, and they have it's called the Museum of Jewish Life. And a part of the museum is comedy. Is just how comedy is a part of the Jewish life. And why do you think that is? Why do you think Jews have comedy? You know, so we've been thinking about that a lot. It's, a, I think, one of the things is escapism. It gives you a minute to escape. It gives you a minute to just to not be in whatever tragedy you're in. When I'm sitting there at Echalat Rabut, the Brothman Performance Center in the heart of Tel Aviv, and it's the middle of a war, and there was action going on everywhere, and for like an hour and a half, everybody's just not in a war. They're in a comedy show and they're laughing together. It's escapism is a part of it. Right. Obviously, there's much I more things. I think it's things. also like, I'm just riffing, but like when, when you're in tight spots constantly, like you have to defend yourself or you have, like your mind is racing. You're trying to think of how to ease the situation. Like say something funny to get the heat off of you. 100%. But it's also, it's everybody's just in their war in their own ways, everyone's in their own way and to all of a sudden just laugh for an hour and a half. And the fact that that museum understands that that is a part of Jewish life mm -hmm. is so important. And um, so the Anna Museum on right the- Right Jerry Seinfeld. What? Right up there with Jerry Seinfeld. It's, it's literally Jerry Seinfeld, me, and then, then this, this amazing uh, comedy group from Israel called Agashat Vachiver, which was like this comedy skit crew that was we grew up on that were 
unbelievable the understanding they had of of the of the culture and the times. Meanwhile, Jerry Seinfeld Summer is saying, I was there right next to Modi in this new museum. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure he's saying that too. I'm <laughs> sure he's saying that. What the, make sure you're close enough to okay. this. Um, wait, wait, then we went to Monaco. We had a private event wow, that's, in Monaco. That's like its own little country, like a tiny little... Yo, uh, to go from Israel to Monaco. Uh -huh. You're going from this war-torn place where everything is like it's the end of the summer. So the whole country is covered in like a layer of dust. Oh, God. You know, the whole, every car has like that little film. The buildings are all just before they were pre-washed. And all of a sudden you land in Monaco. You can eat off the streets. The saying comes from there. It's so clean. Every car is a Bentley. Wow. We had this event and a part of the event, it was a part of a wedding. And um, and they, I, I surprised the groom by doing the last blessing in the chuppah. And I wore I wore a, a, a kapata, and it was such a. And then I walked to the hotel. I want to get a kapata after that, but I saw it's, that. It's, it's, the, it's there's nothing. Pretty, like, there's nothing it's like a pretty a, good a, look. A kapata is the best. But you got to be tall, I think. You right? got to have a little tight. You got to give it a little height, and it's it gives it. And then um and then we then we Monaco Israel and just Jews. Everywhere. How long were you in Monaco? We, three days. Three we days. Had, yeah, we, let, so you, we you literally saw the whole country. I mean, how, whole, how big is it? It's very small. Not, no? ba 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 barely three days. Two, two, two and a half days. It's very small, but it's so beautiful. And, yeah. And uh, Gada Malek, the the uh, French comedian, set us up with a place to you know where to go, what to do, yeah. what to, and and just and just this, all of a sudden see this little Jewish community in the middle of this place is insane. Wow. Anyway, and then I had you on the calendar to come here, and I mean, I heard your your new album. Thank you. And it's it, it's called the uh, Chaim Shuli. Yeah. And it's it's like a nod to like my Chaim, you know, I'm like I'm I just turned 40. Is that what it was? So, meaning the, the song Chaim Shuli is from Eden Banzaken. She's incredible. Okay. And uh and it's it's about uh, you know, uh, she's talking to her new husband that she got she when she got married. That's her That's nuts. That's the the message of the song, but I just like the idea of calling the album Chaim Shuli on my 40th birthday feeling like I don't know. I do feel like I stepped into a whole new milestone in my life. Well, like obviously, really you feels... know, 40. Yeah. Uh, it's Arbam Labina. Arbam Labina is Shishim Zikna. Right. So for, for 40 in the Jewish world is, is known to be, um, you go into your wisdom. Yeah, you, it's not like understanding. I right. don't know. I don't, I, don't know if, I don't know if I got there I yet. I don't but... know if, we, I don't know. I, I tell you one thing I do, I do know. At the age of 40, you begin to realize, listen to people who are 20 years older than you. Take advice from them. They've lived like a full generation. So 60-year-olds, 90-year-olds, all of that, mm -hmm. listen to them. They That's one thing I learned at 40. Um, wait, so this album, Chaim Shali, which means life mine, my life, Chaim Shali, it's what I call Leo. Uh, yeah. So it's it's I go Chaim Shuli Motik Boina Chaim Ke Mo Chaim Shuli Chaim Shuli Bo Mam Ke He's he's already picking up. Hebrew. No, he speaks Yiddish fluently. Uh -huh. uh, and the, and so that when I saw that, and then I didn't know that's the name of that album. Yeah. But I I I listened to the album a few times, and I'll tell you the vibe I got from your new album Chaim Shuli. It's literally a reminder to breathe. Mm. Just breathe. All of the songs there, I I've heard in different ways, yeah. And where they're sung like in a much more intense way, and then you sing them in your way, yeah. And especially during this time of, of with, that we're in a war, you it really just reminds everybody just breathe. Yeah, I breathe. wanted to I wanted it to be on a very like sort of raw level, like very calm and, and soothing level I don't I I wanted to sort of try to give the vibe that I try to do at live events so it's done with a very like you know like similar like the instruments that I play with mm -hmm. and uh that like the, the musicians that I play along with and um we actually did we shot video one day we went and and on a rooftop in the city and we shot video for all these songs. Really, and they're they were still working on editing them and putting them out one by one, along with it. But it was really meant to just give you like this is what it feels like to be at an Ellie Levin event, like if you know, sort of uh, vibe. And I I can't say I've been to an Ellie Levin event, but I Ellie Levin to me is okay. I'm going for Shabbos for Shabbat in uh, in Great Neck. 
I'm going to go have Friday night dinner at my friend in Great Neck. And it's going to be traffic. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit Artist, L11, and let Spotify journey me through oh, nice. L11. And then I like all of you. Great Neck. Why? I, I, have a, I have a fixation with the Farsis. The who? <laughs> the, per, the Persians. The Persians. I have like a whole routine of, of, of like Persian jokes that I picked up over the years. Yeah. I'm not gonna. I know. I'm not gonna I've, do I've that actually the heard some of them, but don't. It's not even. Um, so, so that's. So, I guess the live event is in, is in another event with you. But I'm just. This album, my favorite song in the entire album was um, "Habet Mishamayim." Uh, yeah, that's that's originally by Avi Rottenberg. Right. It's. Uh, but you sing it much slower. Yeah, it's it's like a it's a it's it's literally gullus. Habet is like look what what we went through, but. No matter what we went through, all through this, no matter what, throughout all of this, we, we didn't will not forget, forget your name. name. So it, the song in broad strokes. So this song to me is obviously I've heard it. I, I don't remember the Rabbi Rottenberg version of it, but Chazen Helfgat mm-hmm. sings it in his album called "Look from Heaven," which is what Habet Mishamayim means. Look from the, in broad strokes. The song is Habet Mishamayim. Look at us. We were taken like. We were taken to be slaughtered like lambs and to be embarrassed and to be murdered and to be tortured. And throughout all of this, we remembered your name. So event, obviously, however you say it, you, you can... Chasmin Helfgott does this and it is better than any opera in the world. Hmm. He's screaming, Habet Mishamayim Murai, Habet, Habet Mishamayim Murai. Which is a Kosovitsky piece that Kosovitsky we just found out did not write it, but it was he made it famous, and it and Helfgott just goes higher and higher and higher. And then I heard you sing it, and it's like, wow, yeah. we were taken like. But Should we, we do this song a little do bit? Do it, do it, do it. I, I happen anything to love but me it. talking would be great. Ha <laughs> I know I'll teach God. I know I'll teach God. Unbelievable. Thank you. So I'm Thank saying you. to you, like, when I hear Chazan Helfgott sing this, he's screaming it. And then at the end, it's like, he gets it's like, and it's the focus you put us in. And throughout all of it, we didn't forget you. We don't forget your name. The soldiers going out to battle. Mm-hmm. You see them singing with Ishai Rebo on the border. We been going out into this to the into to war, and your name is on our lips. They're singing Shema Israel. They're singing Hashem Melech, Hashem Malach, Hashem Imloch. It's like this. Literally, is such a reminder to breathe. It's, yeah. it, am I making sense when I'm saying this or no? Yeah, I mean, because you, you understand a song like this, you can also scream at God. Right. You were, we were taken to, to 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 be slaughtered like lambs, humiliated and, and, and destroyed, humiliated. And I'm I, I'm gonna, I don't know if it ever works out, but I I'm gonna just play a little bit from Health God just to you to understand. I'm waiting to hear your cover. I'm my my cover. No, I just I just. You understand when I bring Jewish singers on, it's just so I can talk about Jewish music. Right. I love you. I'm, we're gonna no, push your album, ready. but you're, but you're, like so, so here, to... here. Mm-hmm. 
Nowhere near where he's going. He goes berserk. Uh, to be killed. Be embarrassed. So you understand you can you can tackle this issue in so many ways. The fact that we're he's being a powerhouse. He's a powerhouse. Nothing like, to say, but so are you. So yeah, you're a powerhouse it's, too. It's just a different to, direction, I guess. But it's you like, really are a powerhouse. I'm I'm telling you, I just saw on Instagram how music is also like comedy, releases endorphins and exercise and I can't tell me you. I can't tell you how many times on flights I've listened to your albums in full. Wow, in full. Oh, okay, in, this is because it's you're on a flight. Too much. I can't, I'm gonna. My it's head's so gonna... good. So okay, the next song in the albums, the next song that's in the album that's unbelievable is. Um, tell me what one of the next oh, songs we had. We had Chaim Shaliz was the uh, original song, but right. uh, Tfilat Kala. So, and I, oh my! Wait, 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 Bavli. Oh my God! This is the niggin that. This is another. It's a, it's about Gullus. It's, it's Gullus. It's, it's uh, the, our, our journey through like through time of being exiled wherever we are, but we're dreaming about the base of English to come right. back and and uh, worship God in, in his all his glory in the most beautiful, holiest way. And who wrote that song? It's I don't know, but I know it's ancient. I mean, it's ancient. I yeah. don't know who. And I, we always give credit. I, if I could, I I would give credit to whoever wrote that song. But it's a song that's it's a nigun that I sing when I do kol nidre for Yale, for uh, after right after mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. Where do you where do you dive at, at at Sixth Street Synagogue. So oh, I nice. I've done, I was like eight years. I did uh, Kol Nidre services there. Now we hired a guy. I'm too. I can't. Uh-huh. But uh, but that's the niggin we use for that. And it's such an amazing tune. It's such a. It's great for harmony. It's great. It's, it's great for the Kahela the congregation. Benny Friedman in. has a recording of that yeah. in a cappella album, which is yeah. Pff, yeah. absolutely un. Believable. Then he hits every single song, just perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, I'm a Benny lover. You're a Benny lover. Yeah. So what, what else? What, he's what, like, what? he's like a, a rich, you know, a, a rich. His, his uncle Avon Fried, you know. His that. uncle Avon Fried, his father Manus Friedman. His yeah. uh, come on, you got to be kidding me! But still, he's Benny Friedman. He's his own thing, and yeah. he's a powerhouse, and he's a wedding singer, and he's amazing energy. Your, your, um. You're more heartsick, yeah. And you I'm, record I'm, a lot in your house. I see your videos. Yeah. People should you should definitely be following. What's your Instagram? L Eleven Music. L Eleven Music. Yeah, and I'm, I I do a lot of like my Instagram material. I do it in my uh, my own house. But it sounds so professional. I thank you. I, I try my best. And you hear your you hear your soul in it. I mean, how it's amazing. And you just come up with stuff that also is current. Like you did um, Hatikva. Yeah, so beautiful your hatikva. Yeah, let's let's do a little of that. Dude, let's do it. Let's <clears throat> do it. <clears throat> Ein 
You know, I I actually recorded. And you recorded that. You actually in Yerushalayim, you went up at the end. It was so beautiful. Yeah, I, I mean, which I copied in a few places when I performed. When I sing Hatikva at the end of after October seventh, I've been singing Hatikva at every show. Now it's after an hour and fifteen minutes of drink cup yeah. of talking. So sometimes I don't have. Do you feel so, hoarse at the end of your? No, I no. I I very much keep my core okay. engaged and make sure I'm not uh-huh. screaming. I even though I'm a screamer on stage, yeah. uh, I keep an eye on my voice, especially now that I know I'm singing a tick. But at the end, you got to leave something. Right. You got to leave a little something yeah, there yeah. To, to hit. Those. It's such a great way to end because it's, it's it's everybody's right there with you like that way, you know. And doing it in Israel is one level because everybody also knows it, so they're singing back. Yeah. And Do you know just, Chabad doesn't doesn't uh, like Katikva? I, I know they they don't. Um, I, I did a gig on Hanukkah, yeah. in Crown Heights, yeah. And I'm halfway through Katikva, and the power went out. Somebody pulled the plug. It's like oh, a you're full kidding! Stage with lights and smoke no. and everything. Oh, oh wow, that's not cute. It's a, it's yeah, not, no, it's not it's intense. Energy. It's it's um, no. Not I Mashiach think Chab- well. First of all, I mean, you do it at. I've been I've been doing it. We did it at the Kennedy Center. We did it in uh, all over the world, all over Europe, all over Germany, all over. Just singing her take at the end of every song. It lets people like we just laughed for an hour and a half during a war. It brings them back into don't forget where our hearts, our souls are. Yeah. Um, but. I, I, Chabad, I think, has a problem with Hatikva because it's liotam chofshi to be yeah. free. Yeah. Now, somebody explained it to me afterwards. Right. Uh, most people in, in Crown Heights wouldn't do that. Now, there are some people who are like, you know. Yeah. But but somebody explained to me that like it was written literally by somebody who was anti-religion, and that's liotam chofshi meant no religion. It li- meant liotam chofshi could be originally. To be I don't think that's nation. what anybody's thinking now. I don't when they're think singing. so either. I but, I said sometimes. When I do sing it, it, you go back on that. I don't know. In my words, I like to sing. Okay, I like That's that. what we need. We need you've been on that pilgrimage. You've been it's on that not crusade. A yeah. it's, it's what it is. Uh, it's, you, you create Mashiach energy. Yeah, yeah. The albums you put out are creating Mashiach energy. People yeah. are listening to it. You're giving them a moment to well, How did that start with you? How did you get into that? Do you remember? I, I, you, you're the easiest person to explain it to. If you're performing in front of an audience and they're all with you yeah. and you have a room full of everybody laughing together as a community of that moment, Jewish, not Jewish, it, that's Mashiach energy. Yeah. That's Mashiach energy here, but that's the unity. In that moment, everybody's together. Everybody's in harmony. Everybody is is. It's unbelievable, and it's and you see it everywhere. And you see it, and it's 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 everywhere. You have to look for it and see it. And it's it's there and create it by buying tickets to a, to a comedy show. Buy four tickets instead of two, and you bring two people. You created Mashiach energy. You're causing mm-hmm. someone to laugh. If you have a concert, somebody sees you. L11 is doing a concert. Get an extra two tickets. Bring somebody. They're gonna uh, give somebody so happy. Time. It's always somebody that needs it. It's yeah. always somebody that you know. I needed that. Thanks for the ticket. I needed that. Are you doing live? Sh- are you doing show shows? Or are you doing like, p- private events? They're mostly mostly. It's like some cousin parties and stuff like that. It's not really my go to. Like it's not. I'm not so driven to do that. Why not? I don't know. I, I it's not like my dream. I, it's I, I love I love being in people's, you know, happy times specifically. Like you know, I, I love. You don't have to sell me on that. When people text me, I'm coming to your show. It's my mother's 60th birthday. We're all bringing her to your show. I literally yeah. tears come yeah. down my eyes. Yeah. The mother's 60th birthday is at my show, so you can still do that. It right. still brings right. them in. I'm just saying sure. you. I, mean, I, I see you as I'm still f- floored by it, like Madison Square Garden with Yisha. Like I wasn't there actually, but like the idea of like so many people coming together like that and just such that's Mashiach energy. A hundred percent. Yeah. Chalat I'm doing the Beacon Theater. This is it's first of all it's easier to perform for a bigger audience than it is for it is a, it? so much easier. So why why is that? 
that energy they give back to you. Uh -huh. When you get that first laugh back from them, it's, it's a wave. Wow. It's like a wave. When you're doing a, Is there any aspect of like a f fright? Do you, do you have that at all? No. 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 You don't strike me as somebody who has I don't. stage fright. No, it's the, the fright is when it's the fright is what you do. When you're doing events that are not in a theater, you're, you're in a backyard. Is the sound going to be okay? Yeah. Are they going to be focused? You don't need them to be focused because you're a singer. They can still eat right. their hamburger right. and you can be in wh and whoever's jamming with you is jamming with you. Right. And whoever's yeah. kumzitzing with you is kumzitzing with you. Comedy, you can't have people walking around the back and people coming and going. They have to be focused. So my fear is when it's ever, it's in a place that's not made for comedy. Yeah. Anyway, back to you. Before we go off at Tekfa, I wanted to talk about Misha Berach Tahal. Yeah, that's a recording you yeah. did that was it's been, one of the yeah. best done. I did it in, back in 2021. Really? Not, not like that wasn't. What happened was somebody reached out to me who's involved with lone soldiers in Israel. Like basically, his son is a, a soldier in Israel and he's living in America. They, they call it lone soldiers. Chayal Buded. It's a it's a soldier whose family is not in Israel. So he's a soldier. His parents live in Milwaukee or New Jersey, but he went to go serve in the army. So he doesn't have family in Israel. Right. So Chayal this Buded. guy is a Hasidish uh, Heimish guy. And yeah. he, he's very involved. He created chats and he sends them gifts all the time. He sends yeah. stuff for Shabbos and whatever. So he reached out to me, asked me if I could sing a song for them. Oh, wow. So I thought like, Misha Berk it's you know. It's, um, it's it, but it, the way you see it on the video, it's like you did it just after the war. Yeah, and it's, it's just Mena Shemaim, and it really jumped up like crazy after the war. Everybody was playing it everywhere. And it's, everywhere. Uh, so I'm just going to give a little, I, give. I, I just find, I want to move out a little bit because it's hard for me to sing sitting back. How are we doing sound-wise? We're uh, good? Maybe I, I should. What, what do you want? I'm going to pull it. Can I turn it? Actually, yeah. I don't know. Yeah? Sound good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because I moved a little bit. Okay. okay. So this is Mishaber for the, the the soldiers. It's the, the blessing for the soldiers yeah, of Tzal. We want to just IDF. bless them that they should come home safe, that they should complete their mission successfully in the best way possible, that they should be able to come home to their families who are waiting for them desperately. Amen. Mishaber Abraham Amazing. 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 I always love to go from there into there, and then Am Yisrael Chai. And it's it, yeah. It's, a, it's just a medley of like all the war songs that people have been like leaning on so heavily since. It's, so heavily. It's, it's, it's literally almost a year now. I sing Hatikva, and then when they're clapping, we play um, Am, uh, Am Yisrael Chai from the forty second. So without the whole Dvar Torah, he gives for the first forty two seconds. Uh -huh. So it just goes like people clapping for after Hatikva, and I go Am Yisrael Chai. And they you get in. Like people the end. are like, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's the song the war songs that came out of this war are on another level. The other so you know, for um 
Have you heard some Lukayim and all that? It's from some, it's all of those songs, but, but this, these songs are getting people through it. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I love this part about you, Moody. Like what? it's not like it's like not what you would think. Like you know, you're the comedian, but like your your heart is really in the music. Oh, your heart the is, music is yeah. the music. It's all I listen to is Jewish music. Yeah, there's so much great Jewish music out now. So many people are, are, and they're all their own thing. I feel there's so much Israeli music that's really becoming super popular now. Like, you know, the whole Ishai Omar Adam and uh, Kiva and all those. That Ishai whole. Rebo, I mean, too. The other, a lot of his other Israeli songs. Um, I, so I'm kind of into like, when it's a little bit Jewishy. You like the Hasidish. Yeah, otherwise it sounds like, you know, I came to you, you left me, but you didn't bring me, and I don't know you now, you do know me now. I can't, I can't, I can't. And just take a psalm and sing it out and give it, you know, it, that's what it is, what it's about. Yeah. Okay, and then we have to discuss your animamin. Oh. Yes. I don't know if we talked about that when you were when you were on last. No, 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 no. It didn't. It's 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 almost a year since we released it. I released it right before Sukkot. So let me just explain. And please let the audience know what this is. It's a YouTube video. Yeah. I I to be honest with you, I don't watch YouTube videos of. That's not true. A nice where I can't sleep and I go onto video, but I then I watch Chazanim. I watch old cantors. Doing live performances, I, it's fading away. You're one of the last. I, it's, uh, it's it's yeah. unbelievable. I watch them. I just it's so, it's so amazing. Um, but I don't listen. To, I wouldn't li like Lipa Schmelzer and his music. I I listen to. I w I wouldn't watch a video. Right. I just, but I have it in my ears. Right. Um. So this song, the the video is unbelievable. It, who who, who right. made the video? We we it's know Danny Finkelman and Aaron Orion. Uh, Danny Finkelman, I know. Victoria yes. Zerkiev, right? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, let, let me tell you the how it started. Please. There's uh, a woman, Cecilia Margolis. Do you know her? She's a, a woman who lives in Manhattan Beach. She's uh, unbelievable. She's an older woman. She has. She's obsessed with music, and she's been like she's done a lot of stuff with God Elbaz and a lot of singers. And I had done an event for her on Hanukkah. And afterwards she told me, Ali, I want to do a song with you. So she started showing me some of her music and she tells me, oh, I have this song that I wrote with Kalbach. I'm like, you wrote a song with Kalbach? No way. She's like, I, I wrote a couple of songs with him. I have his piano. She, I, I was, she, I, she brought me to her basement. She has Kalbach's piano in her basement that she wow. redid it and made it really like, you know, beautiful. Um, and she, she played this track for me. And I'm like, let's do it. I'm like, you don't, that's it. Like, I, you don't have to sell me on this. This is like amazing. Wow. Beautiful song. But with, she had Kalbach's original voices on a reel, like, you know, the original reel. So we basically created a track around it. And I did a duet with Shlomo Kalbach. Who gets to do it? an actual <sighs> duet with Shlomo Kalbach? Wow. Then once the track was done by Donnie Gross, he's incredible, incredible uh, producer and ranger. We went to Israel for, it was like, I, I actually did like a 12 day trip back in, I think it was in June of last year. So nice. I was, I was in heaven. Like I, the, the actual shoot was one day, but I got to like really take advantage of my time in Israel and stay there for like 12 days. I saw you had, um, you had a, uh, no, what is that? Drone footage. The drone footage. Yeah. It was very, very nice. Yeah. You were very, very, it's beautiful. I remember that. You know, it's funny. I actually... I was in Tel Aviv at one point and I took off with my drone and suddenly soldiers are all around me. Oh, really? They come, they asked me, like, before it even landed, the whole drone flight, when I look at the video of it, was only three minutes. Right. So I took off. Turns out I was right next to the U.S. Embassy. Right. Not a good place to be <laughs> yeah. flying your drone. I didn't know and I, whatever. And luckily they, like, realized I wasn't a threat. I was just a Nabuch American. But uh, they gave me back my drone. But, yeah, that was a drone story there. But the point is that we, they, they, they had a whole crew of people dressed up like hippies, like Shlomo guys, and and this guy uh, Daron Henya, his name was was looked pretty close to Kalbach, and they made him up even better from the in the video. Wow. People who knew Kalbach messaged me saying, "How did how did you find this footage?" I'm like, "We didn't find it. We made this footage. This is new footage." But it was like such an incredible production like really really perfect can i tell you a recent karl incident with me 
So my mom's basement, I've been going through my mom's basement through stuff. We have stuff there for over 40 years. My mom's in the same house. My mom and dad, living in the same house. And we've been, we, we bought a house in Connecticut. So I'm bringing stuff that I had there to, to like, it's really like, and nostalgia. I, nostalgia, like, no, every box I open, it's like, I'm in my 20s. I'm in my 30s. I'm in my 40s. And, and um, I opened this box of uh, back in the day before there were phones you had your you had your 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 own personal phone book you had your own like where you kept the numbers mm -hmm. of people and i remember one night i remember the night so so clearly i was living on the upper west side and i was with my friend dina back then gross now ohev shalom and she is the anaklach of the of rip oh yeah she's the anaklach we just had as and we right and we I mean, you just had his yard site. Is it Rabshai no, it's year? in May, yeah. It's so what, in May. What was just now? So people kept on sending Rib Shiloh now. Everybody's in Rib Shiloh. Maybe just because of L. Uh, I, maybe L, yeah, 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 before. Uh, so back to the story. I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, so here we are on the Upper West Side. Me and Dina were going to go to H&H &H Bagels. And we, we see Shlomo Kalbach. And she goes, that's Shlomo Kalbach. And we started talking to him. And of course, she tells him who... She is, and he tells her a Reb Shaila story, and we just talk. And I like he was holding a bag of bagels. He went to H and H Bagels. It was over there, and he gave me his card, Shlomo Rabbi Shlomo Kalbach, and the address of the shul. You have it, and I I had and I had it in my little pocket for years. It's been in the in the pocket of my address book, and I opened it up and I pulled out. It says Rabbi Shlomo Kalbach. He nice. gave me his card, and I have it on my desk next to the Lubavitcher Rabbi. Next to Reb Shaila mm -hmm. and, 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 and Rabbi Shlomo, it's awesome. It's so, it's so. Uh, just to remind you, it's iconic. To, to, it's iconic. And the moment I had with him, and who, I, you didn't realize back then. This is in ninety two three. He wasn't. He didn't. He really just his success is after his death. Mm -hmm. One of those things, but it was just so great. So, anyway, this song Animamin is. I mean, wow. This is an, a beautiful, you have to, people, you have to, um, Leo will make sure that you have ways to get to all of this stuff. Yeah, we got to add links. Yeah, Leo will do that. And, um, but this song. I am the mame, I am the mame, the moon of Shalema. I am the mame, I am the mame, the moon of Shalema. The Avar Bishayis Mamea, in Korze Achakeloi, Achakeloi, it's it's uh it's nice to have an animam that's more upbeat you know? absolutely again just like a Beit Mishamayim. Yeah. It's the way it's, here I am, I I leave, I believe in full in belief in the coming of the Messiah, of a messianic era. Yeah. You can, the way you can deliver that line yeah. is a Most million Most Animamans are mournful, but Afal Pishi is we're waiting, we're waiting. We're, right. We're, we're, no matter what, we're still, but right. there's also, you know, like MBD, Anima Amin. Um, right. It's, so again, it's how you deliver yeah. it. And speaking of Habayt Mishamayim, you have Mordechai ben David has that. Habayt Mishamayim ure ki karob fun himalu unazen ki hainu lagvakei lez lagvakei lez bago yimta na 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 ni na na ti na 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 It's a Mordechai ben David version of the song. Know it. You don't know it? No. Well, I have to I have to check it out. Leo, we got to add a link to that. <laughs> yeah, we, you know, we'll add all the links to all of this song. The, the, but wait, who was I with? Was it you that we discussed all the songs and then I had to make a full 
Yeah. Uh, Instagram yeah. uh, playlist. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I guess we're about to do another one for this. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, so, uh, wow, 45 minutes. Uh, creating Mashiach energy is so important and you need help and money is is that help. And I want to thank a uh Provisions, kosherdogs.net, best hot dogs in the world. You guys are great and such fans and they came to shows in Israel. And just 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 great partner. Um, and uh, Weitz and Luxembourg, the law firm that does, not only do they do well, they do good. Very philanthropic. Our friend Arthur Luxembourg and his wife, Randy, who listens to the podcast and reports to him. And um, that they help create this Mashiach energy. So I want to thank them out too. And I, I want to talk about just having you as a part of people's lives. Like how do they, if you're having an event in your house, Instead of just sitting around and people and yapping and gossiping, bring L eleven. I like that. Isn't that just like no one needs to talk? People can sit around and do a kumzitz with you, and just and and you do not only just you, you also do songs that aren't aren't uh, yeah, I Jewish like songs music as well. And you you can really read the room. You can really see who, what this see room what, needs. What perks people up? Yeah, people. I can up. see that. I can yeah. you you read the know your audience. Yeah. And um yeah, thank you. You you have that and uh and anything new you're working on? I I'm working on a couple of new stuff. Um I'm not ready to share it. No, no. We, but uh I just wanted to take advantage of this platform to to send people to a few of my stuff that I'm really really proud of. Um check out my album Hear My Prayer. That's we talked about that a little bit last time. Also, I have a song for my daughter that I wrote, Lonnie's song. I wrote it when she turned 13. Right. She's 14 now, and she's really becoming like a mature young lady. But uh, I, I'd like to try to get people to check that out. Lonnie's song, it's, it's just about how proud I am as a father. And one more song that I want to talk about that's already a few years old yeah. is Afi Komen. Right. Um, about six Six years ago, my brother Yisrael, who was 21 at the time, was had just gotten engaged, and it was on Chalamet Pesach, and he went to visit some of my siblings in Muncie. And on his way back, when he was coming into Farakaway, a drunk driver was racing and crashed into his car and killed him and his kala. Um, and the next day, by the Levaya, my father got up and spoke, and he was, it was Pesach, and he's saying. You know, I feel like comparing it to Anafi Kaiman, that like, you know, Hashem gave me this neshama 21 years ago, gave him holy and pure, and I raised him in his way, holy and pure, and I returned him shalim. So just like Afi Kaiman, the children steal it, and they give it back to the father, they get a present. He's like, I want, I want a present in return. What did my father want as a present in return? He asked for Shadduchim and Klal so He asked for, I want 10,000 Shadduchim. The Kali soul. That's uh, matches, matches uh, of soul like, uh, of uh, marriages, souls and marriages. Shidduchim. Yeah, and um, you know it was super inspiring to everybody there. There's, you could actually see the video of him talking by the Levaya, yeah. by the funeral. And the following year, right before Pesach, I decided I need to make a song about this, and I wrote basically this idea. And it's in Yiddish, but on YouTube you can find the video with subtitles. And basically, people got involved right after the Levaya, these girls who are my sister's friends, and they created a website called 10K Bata Yisrael, which is focused 10, on of Jewish homes. Jewish homes, yeah. And and they uh, focused on creating a platform for people to, individuals like me and you, to suggest Shadokham matches to uh, for people that they know. And... Uh, yeah, uh, my father calculates that it's been about a shidduch a week uh, wow. uh, uh, that I got engaged wow. since, uh, since. People ask me about advice as a comedian. They ask me about advice on on shidduch dates. What's something funny I could say? What's what's the what's a you know? And they know I'm gay, and they know I'm married to a man, and then and and but they why still. Why are you gay? Why, why am I gay? Uh, are you you ever you never heard that clip? Oh, I, I all, all no. Oh no, I've listened to you. Okay, I just, that's a clip. <laughs> um, and if, fun, anyway, yeah. I so it's like, I I I think I came up with uh with this. I think I spoke about this before in the podcast. But when you guys are on your shidduch dates, and it's hard to explain to people who are not religious what a shidduch date yeah. is. 
it's a match made. You, the parents figured out this. It's a blind date. It's a blind date. It's, a, it's a blind date. And now they're sitting there. It, this awkward two, two kids who haven't really dealt with the other sex that much. Right, right. So now all of a sudden they're forced into a conversation. And so they go into the conversation of like, so are you going to do Negelvasser in the morning? Like, right. are you going to wash your hands right by the bed? Right. Are you going to cover your arms? Are you going to cover your hair? He's in the house. Are you, what right. kind of a phone are you going to have? It's so not the vibe. Right. So the Labava Cherebi, Zecher Tzadik Levracha, said when two Jews meet, the first thing they should discuss is how to help somebody else. Mm. That's why he gave you a dollar. So mm. as soon as you met him, he gives you a dollar to go help somebody else. The Shidduch date is two Jews meeting. You're sitting there, the conversation should be, how can both of us help somebody else? Set up other shidduchim. That's one thing. Yeah. Also, if the girl says, I was a counselor at Hask, I want to continue working with that. Oh, really? I would love to help with that. I work with Hatzala. I work with mm -hmm. whatever. Make that the conversation, not like, what are you going to cover and what are you going to eat and what are you going to just, you know, how, do you, how are you going to create Mashiach energy should be the conversation. And then you figure out, you know, is this where we're going? You know, I like it. But that's I, still not a joke. I was hoping for a joke about like I, a good fish. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, but just like saying, people are looking for jokes, you know, what are you going right. to hit it with a joke? Yeah. You can. This Can I try a joke? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go Why ahead. did the Hezbollah guy come to work today? He didn't get the message. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> I'm not sure when this is airing, but this is, this, this podcast is on the day following all of the pagers blowing up in How Lebanon. Incredible. How absolutely insane is that? Uh, it's like the jokes are going. The next movie that like yeah, every. Do do you understand? Let's just discuss this. Do you understand? So so Israel had to have somebody. Somebody had to sell the package to Hezbollah. Mm -hmm. So somebody somebody from Israel is selling. Met with Hezbollah and said, "Here's what you guys need. These aren't beepers. I don't think." I don't think they're beepers. Do you, how they're old like are you? Do you know what a beeper yeah, is? Have yeah. you ever I seen a beeper? Beepers, yeah. beepers are the little things yeah. that used to be on your on, the, on your belt, and it gave a phone number of where to call call to. Yeah. So you have to go look for a quarter and a payphone, and you call that number back. These, I believe, are like Lahavdil, what Hatsa, United Hatzala like has. Type of things. United Hatzala, the Hatzala in Israel have this. It, it's kind of like a smaller than a phone, but it let. It has like a ways of who's in trouble in the area. Uh -huh. So if someone's having a heart attack and you're three blocks away, it lets you know. Uh -huh. So you can run over there. Right. So it's like data. It's, it's like, a, like a Yeah. Screen. So obviously it's for uh, for the barbarians to let them know where they have to be. Right, right. And someone sold them this package. Right. And then in Taiwan, put the bomb in. Say, wow. Yeah, yeah. Wow. It's It's insane. Modi. Yes. I, ha I had a question. No. Wh wh what's the name Modi? It's so funny you're asking that. So funny you're asking that. I was just talking about this. Modi is Mordechai. It's a short nickname for Mordechai. Okay. I but, couldn't see that. I was trying to figure out. But I put it in as my middle name. I put it in as my middle name when I was growing up. Whenever, whenever I filled anything up, I would say Mordechai Modi Rosenfeld. And this is before everything was computerized. So when I went and got my passports and driver's licenses, everything says Mordechai Modi Rosenfeld. Mm -hmm. And so my middle name is my, but yesterday I was having a conversation with somebody and we're talking about the Jews were waiting for Mashiach. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for a messianic era where everything is in harmony. Everything is in oneness. And the Goyim are waiting for Jesus to come back. Mm -hmm. And I asked him, the Muslims, they, 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 they must be waiting for something. They, they're not, they, there's no way that they can be happy with this. Mm -hmm. They definitely want something too. Right. And so we Googled, is there a messianic, is there a, messiah a messiah figure for the, and his name is Modi. Really? His name is M A H D I. There you go. Maybe you could bring the gula. Maudi. Maudi. <laughs> That's which is what Safarics call me. Yeah. So I might as well just yeah, be. Yeah. So I, I could be the Messiah of the Muslim nation. You want to hear something interesting? Somebody, no. somebody told me a reporter was talking to these Muslims and he's saying, look, you're sending thousands of rockets every day to these Jews. This is an old story. Like, you're not hitting anything. Like, doesn't that, like, what, what's going on? Like, is your aim that bad? Yeah, and they're like, no, we have great aim. The God of the Jews is blocking all these rockets. 
He said that. He said that. So then he said, if so, then why you keep on shooting if the God doesn't want it? He's like, we're waiting for the time when the God of Jews is angry at them and is going to allow us to finally hit. Wow. And that, wow. That, that sounds like biblical level. It's you learn from your enemies. That yeah. you, there it is. And it's that whole, I was in Israel, man. Yo, the, the vibe is, is, is you're in a restaurant, you're on the beach, but you know there's a war going on. You're, it's so harsh. Constantly and then you, there. and it's, you know, I don't put the news on, but we're in the hotel. So I, okay, let me see what's happening. And you just see the, the anger and the screaming and the yelling and the, in Knesset Yisrael. It's like it's called the Knesset, the part, but it's it's like from the Bible, it's from mm -hmm. from Talmud, Knesset Yisrael. This is right. like, they could be the most powerful thing in the world if they just had peace there. Right. If they had peace, it would be more powerful than any Hamas or Iran or Trump or Harris or anything. Right. The energy of Knesset Yisrael at peace could change the world. Yeah. But you have to be like, realizing this is the hardest time for people to like being on the same page because there's so many ways to look at everything, especially when it's so intense. Like I gotta imagine, like this person lost a relative, a sibling, uh, yeah. whatever you call it. This person's desperate for like world peace. This person, like, you know, the, every angle that you come, like you, you, it's contradicting each other. So there's, and Jews, uh, you know, have a billion opinions. So like everybody has a different. So, so what's the focus then? If everything is contradicting, but you go back to what the focus is, what is the purpose of being a Jew? Mashiach. At the end of the day, it's Mashiach. People mm -hmm. say the purpose of being a Jew is to do Torah and mitzvahs and learn Torah all day. It's no, no, no. Mashiach, first, first and foremost, is a, getting us to a messianic era. That is the focus of any Jew. Whether you go to shul every day or whether you go to shul once a year. You're stressing this unifi unifying goal. It's it's what yeah. it is. It's that that's what it is. And and so if you focus on that, you the, it'll come together. Mashiach yeah. is the, is the is the focus of is the number one goal of every Jew, whether you you understand it or not. Mm -hmm. It's not you know we have to have a kosher and kosher and kosher. And the flight has to be kosher kosher. So I can kosher kosher and the Pesach program. That's not the goal. Right. The, your Pesach program is not the goal. Right, right. Your your goal is Mashiach. Yeah, and what can you yeah. do to create Mashiach energy till we are fully in Mashiach? And it's oh. and I'm, I think mean it's by the Jews, the Goyim, Muslims, everybody. I once got kicked out of Knesset because I was I, I tried playing guitar. And then. Did you? I I was I was in a documentary that was um that was we we taped in the Knesset like guerrilla style and we snuck into it and all that you know, they're screaming at each other they're yelling they're, they're you out to of bring back some of your old stuff like your I remember the first video of watching you were like this chusid in LA maybe I forgot what the, even what was about do you remember what I'm talking about what you were doing like a Hasidish act like with uh, with the glasses maybe or a spoon you had a spoon do you know what I'm talking about yeah oh yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I can't remember I'm bringing, exactly, uh, yeah I, I know what you're remember, talking about like we got you got to like show people like your you know your funny? origins we, you know? we have I haven't done anything for my old special I've been performing my new hour on the tour called pause for laughter and um I forgot my old hour I forgot all I forgot the fakrazel jokes because I've yeah. been working all this new material which by the way is time to discuss the Pause for Laughter audience. Uh, Pause for Laughter tour is on modilive.com. Um, by the time this airs, I believe the tour will be in full gear. Shows everywhere. Oh my God, we're in Montreal. We're in uh, St. Paul. We're in um, in Skokie. In uh, oh, all in. How do you have the energy? I don't. I can go every night. I could if. Give me a hotel room and backstage in the theater, and that's it. I, wow. Leo's dying. It kills him. But the it's, traveling is not in, It's intense. insane. But it's it's not as bad as it as it seems. We travel nice, and I travel with my my husband. So it's and he's been introducing the shows lately, which right. is so cute. That's he awesome. goes up there and he did jokes, and it's like it's so amazing. Yeah. So I and I and that an hour and a half on stage with with the audience. I'm I'm in another level. Wow. I'm the I'm having better a better time than anybody in that in that room. So 
modilive.com get your tickets uh find everything by you there is montreal there is uh the beacon we added a third show at the beacon kane ein ahara we sold out the first two the 17th of december um uh and be the friend that brings the friends to the comedy show get a few tickets for your friends and uh and come or find a friend who's there's a show near him and let him know maybe buy them a ticket and send it to them make that create mashiach energy and we'll Take us and and Ellie Levin. Wait, Ellie Levin. How do we? How did? How did they make you a part of their lives? How, What's the how, best how way to reach you? Well, I have elliellevinmusic.com. My my main platform that I like to post most on is Instagram. Right. So Ellie Levin Music. Um, but yeah, you can reach me on on my website if you want to book me or just ask any questions about what we can do together. Who, who's handling your, your, your bookings? I, I handle it. Oh, you handle it. Yeah. Okay. So that's something old you... Old school. Old school. So that's very sweet though, but it's it changes a vibe. It changes a vibe of, a, of an event, of a party. He... he. It just... Wow. You'll be like, wow. We No one's going to remember your chicken or your fondue or your whatever flowers you brought in, but they're going to remember there was a singer there and we sat and we sang with him and we had the best time of our lives and that's L11 and make that a part of your life. L11 Music com and uh, take us out with something. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'm Israel Chai. I'm Israel Wow, man. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Really, really Thanks for listening, nice. everybody. And um, we're hopeful we'll, we'll be, we're traveling, but we're going to make episodes and it's a weekly thing and we keep that up and Mashiach energy to everybody. Thank you.